In today's video, we're gonna take the Ziyun Crane 2 and go to the upside down. Okay, let's get to it. To achieve this effect, I wanted to make sure that I found a location with a hallway. The reason is because it creates this claustrophobic atmosphere, but also I really wanted to emulate that scene in season two when Hopper went underground and when the camera pulled back, it started to rotate. And the fact that that scene was a tunnel, it kind of made this really cool warping effect and making the audience feel really uneasy as a whole composition just turned upside down. Hence the name the upside down. So I found this location in the house that I thought would be perfect. To light my scene, I only used two lights, the Aperture 120D and the Aperture 672. I really wanted to do a silhouette effect in this scene because for one, I didn't really want to show a lot of the room, but also when it comes to horror and suspense films, you don't really want to show too much. You kind of want to keep the audience guessing what's lurking in the dark. And so I placed the 120D into the kitchen, pointing it straight down towards my subject, thus creating a silhouette. I also didn't want the subject to be completely dark. I wanted to show a little bit of the face and a little bit of the body and so that's where the 672 came in. For this light I actually use a door as a bounce light because I wanted the light to spread it just a little bit more and also to soften it. Now onto the gimbal. So the reason why I wanted to use the Crane 2 is because my main camera is the Sony a7R 3 and the lens that I use was a Sony 24-70 G Master. Now that's a, quite a hefty setup and so I needed a gimbal strong enough to hold that setup. Now the Crane 2 has a lot of cool features but the feature that I really wanted to use for this effect is POV mode. What is POV mode? What this means is that on the Crane 2 when you're in follow mode you can use the joystick and press left or right and that will rotate the gimbal right or left. It's a really cool feature but the problem is, to achieve this effect, the gimbal won't allow me to rotate all the way. And even though the Crane 2 doesn't allow a full rotation of the camera, it was really important for me to capture the natural motion blur of that movement, and you'll see why. So the direction was, is that when I called action, I had my actor walk out to her spot, and once she did, I slowly walked backwards with the camera and gimbal, gently pushing the joystick towards the right, rotating the camera, thus creating the upside down effect. And like I said before, the Crane 2 doesn't rotate the camera all the way around, but that's where After Effects came in. Once we finished, I took my favorite take, placed that footage into After Effects, scaled it by 200%, placed a keyframe on the rotation section in the beginning of the clip, positioned my composition so that the scene looks leveled, and then placed a keyframe at the end of the clip, rotating the composition until it was fully upside down. Add a little warp stabilizer, and there you go, the upside down effect. Pretty cool. Sure, I probably could have shot the scene without rotating the gimbal at all, and then did the rotation in post and adding a little bit of motion blur. But I didn't want to go down that route because I didn't want to risk the effect effect looking cheesy and fake, which is why it was really important for me to capture the natural motion blur of the camera movement while I was filming. And when you combine a really cool camera movement like this and add a little tweaking in post, then you can create a really cool and convincing effect. By the way, I didn't want to do the whole floating flurries and vines growing everywhere like it does in the show. This tutorial was simply focusing on the camera movement of the upside down effect. Don't want to read it in the comments. I feel like an old man doing this. Get off my lawn. Well, hopefully that was helpful to you and fun to watch. I know it was really fun for me to film that effect. And that's the cool thing about tools like handheld gimbals. I mean, it can do so many awesome things, but it's really up to you, the creator, the storyteller. It's up to you and how creative you want to be. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, then go ahead and do so. I'd really appreciate that. And also, if you have any questions about filmmaking or camera gear, hit me up in the comments below or even on Instagram or Twitter. I do love engaging with you guys in that way. And until then, I'll See ya in the next video.